Hey guys, I'm Rob, this is Sarah, and today we're unboxing gemstones that come from one place in the world, and they're called single source gemstones. Make sure you stay tuned till the end because we're also gonna be giving away a really cool specimen. You wanna get started? Of course. First box. Oh, Go we have it. a clue. Oh, wait, yeah, do that first. A gem lost for centuries. Oh. Ooh, okay. So the clue is referring to the this legend of a Spanish conquistador that found the locale where these came from. Okay. But then that locale was lost to historical record for centuries until it was discovered again. Like the Fountain of Pits. Yeah, or Atlantis. Do you know what this is? Yes, it's ametrine. Absolutely. And it is a combination of amethyst and citrine, two varieties of quartz. So a single source gemstone is a gemstone that comes from a single source, at least in terms of like how commercially viable it is to mine it in that place. Like yeah. you can find little pockets of gemstones in other places other than that one single source, mm -hmm. but if there's not enough money to be made mining it, then it won't be mined. I pulled a rough piece out of the box. That's cool. And you can see like the divide, the split yeah. down the middle where it's amethyst on one side and citrine on the other. But it's very rare to find ametrine occurring naturally. Most ametrine on the market that you find in like jewelry and stuff mm -hmm. is going to be treated amethyst to elicit that orange color out or treated citrine to put the purple back in. The single source of this material is the Anai mine in Bolivia. The orange is caused by the iron three plus, mm -hmm. and then it, for the purple, it gets radiated and turned into the iron four plus. Right. This is a single source gem because we only find it in the Anahi mine in Eastern Bolivia. So the legend is that the Spanish conquistador was given this mine as a dowry when he married a local princess named Anahi. Okay. Then the location was lost for centuries, and it wasn't until the 1960s when it was rediscovered in the late 60s, and then in the 70s, the ametrine started uh, hitting the market. Gotcha. The only way you can like get to this mine nowadays is uh, by a combination of boats and roads or by flying there in a small plane. And so the movement of the material and also like mining supplies all has to be transported in that way. And so it's uh, it makes sense to me why it was lost for a few hundred years mm -hmm. for sure. I like when I can see a gemstone and I'm like, ooh, I know the cutter had a fun time with this. Yes. Especially with like bicolor stones like ametrine. So I just know that a gem cutter took a look at, you know, some rough like that and was like, mm -hmm. okay, how can I cut this to really accentuate that color divide between the orange and the purple? Everything on the table other than this big rough is for sale. And I think my favorite thing on the table that's for sale is this because these three fasted pieces, you can, they're very like clean. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. not a lot of inclusions in them. Is it that really hard line yeah, between nice the amethyst split. and the citrine? Uh, it's a really good price. It's $115, which is less than I would expect mm -hmm. uh, to pay so. for this. We have a lot more online as well that is even lower in price, and we'll put all the links in the description. Yeah. Here you go. You can open this Ooh, one. Oh, it's got a clue, clue as well. Okay, you can that one. Okay. Single source gem plus big fan base equals trouble. Let's see. Cool. Whoa. Okay, I can't see anything yet. Oh, there it's it is. Okay. Whoa. Oh! <laughs> it's a big piece. I mean, I, I see where the trouble can lie because this is definitely has a demand and not. Not a ton of supply. So yeah. we got big trouble in little Tanzania here. So this is tanzanite. Really just the color is enough to tip you off. Okay, so it's already rare because it comes from one place, right? Realistically, tanzanite comes from one place, Tanzania, and one mine in Tanzania. Gemstones don't necessarily adhere to uh, borders, uh, like political borders that have been established relatively recently. So yeah, like you may find it in Ethiopia, but not necessarily commercially viable. Right, little, little, Little bits. Yeah. Um, whereas, Otherwise. you know, any tanzanite that you're buying, it's gonna come from Tanzania. I know that tanzanite is pleochroic. Mm -hmm. But have oh, you seen it like that? In not person? like this. Like, this is. It's stunning. It's striking. insane. Yeah. Pleochroism is a phenomenon where when you view a gem from a certain angle, it shows one color. And then when you rotate it and look at it through a different optic axis, it shows a different color. 
and mm -hmm. trichroism is where you get three colors at three different angles. This tanzanite is also untreated and natural because usually when you treat tanzanite, it reduces it to just dichroic, two colors from two angles. And I think we're getting three here. So I, I don't think that's treated. I didn't even know that. I should also stress that tanzanite, it, it usually isn't large. Big pieces of tanzanite are very rare. An exceedingly rare example of an exceedingly rare gemstone is... Wild. Yes. Lots of gemstones technically have pleochroism, but to be able to detect it with just your eye unaided is more rare. And when it's this strong, like tanzanite is one of the best examples. It's the first example that comes to my mind when I think of pleochroic gemstones. I go mm -hmm. tanzanite for sure. Which is different from like this. This is bicolor. So we have, you know, yellow yeah. and purple in here. It's so like the structure of the stone is splitting the light in a way that when you turn it, the you know alignment of the structure is different to you, and then it's different to you, and then it's different to you. And because of that, it gives you a different color. And again, this is untreated, and you can kind of see that, mm -hmm. you can kind of guess that because it's trichroic and not just pleochroic. Almost all tanzanite in jewelry mm -hmm. has been treated. The heat treatment will oftentimes get rid of that like browny yellowish mm -hmm. rust color and bring out the blues or the purples like you see in this uh, faceted stuff here. So, and it, what's really cool is that this is kind, this is pretty much how they get it out of the ground. It's un, this is untreated and it's so rare to find like this. Yeah like saturation of that blue and naturally. So yeah. the legend of Tanzanite is, <laughs> it's discovered pretty recently, only in the 60s. And the story goes that a Maasai tribesman was walking along after a lightning storm that had caused some natural fires. And the idea is that this fire may have incidentally heated some of Tanzanite mm -hmm. on the ground to that striking blue color. Yeah. And he noticed it and picked it up off the ground, originally thought it was sapphire, but when it was tested they found, oh, this, this is, is a new thing. This is a new gemstone. Tanzanite is a type of zoazite that's colored by vanadium. Originally, they wouldn't have called it tanzanite. It was named by the Tiffany and Company. So it, one of the reasons why tanzanite is so rare is because you just mentioned the vanadium is the coloring mm -hmm. element. Well, vanadium is rare already. So to have it color a gemstone is rare. Yeah. And it also doesn't usually form and crystallize with other minerals like zoazite. Mm -hmm. so, it's really just an absolutely remarkable roll of the geological dice that tanzanite even exists. Yeah. So the, the scientists and experts in this field are pretty confident that because of the specific circumstances required for tanzanite to even exist, that it's probably nowhere else in the world. The worst thing about tanzanite is that because it's a single source mm -hmm. gem, any little incident can affect the price dramatically. Yes. It can go up and down and it has in the past. Anything from a flood or an earthquake or political unrest or conflict mm -hmm. can all but shut down the output of yeah. this stone. And so this parcel is for sale at, along with the ring and bracelet. This parcel I feel like is a really good deal. It's $90. And you see such a range of colors in this parcel. You don't want to go looking for this in the winter. Okay, I have an idea. I would almost say you can't go looking for this in the winter. Uh, Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, so green. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, that's a huge piece. My goodness. This is chrome, chrome diopside. diopside. Honestly, one of the greenest stones out there. I think I, the shade yeah. of green that chrome diopside brings is stunning. It's a very greeny green. So the clue relates to where it's found, which is Siberia. It is so bitterly cold that it can only be mined like three months out of the year during mm -hmm. the warmer months. And that's a stretch to call it warmer. A warmer relative to minus 80 degrees. Yeah, the pat, like in January of 2023, I think, yeah. it got to like negative 80 something a, degrees. A preposterous made up temperature. It, yeah. And as beautiful as the color is, and as clean as a lot of the chrome dioxide is, it's still a really cheap stone. I don't get it. I yeah. honestly, this isn't even, I'm not even like making a marketing pitch here. I don't get why this stuff isn't more valuable. It doesn't make sense. However, we do think it's the gym industry's best kept secret. If you love the color green, this should be on your radar. I mean, yeah. it, like I, my brother's favorite color is green and I bought him some chrome studs. Yeah. And he I, gets compliments all the time. The name sounds like 
it's something that came out of a lab. Yeah, you know? like, but it's a totally natural stone. Yeah, it did, this isn't man-made material. I think right. we have another box. We do. Four more natural wonders. Well, that doesn't. Well, help. that's unhelpful. The box has boxes in it. Ooh. Oh, oh my, my God. gosh. So you, you might be wondering, why are they getting excited over that little lipstick tube embedded in that rock? So this is Red Barrel, also known as Bix Bite. One of the rarest gemstones in the world. And I'm yeah. not like, I mean, Tanzanite, yeah, it comes from one place, but like the only commercially viable source of Red Barrel is in the Wawa Mountains in Utah. And even in that one locale, it is very rare to find gem quality red barrel in sizes more than like facetable above a, above a carrot. For, well, first of all, it's a perfect little hexagon, which if you look at it from the top of this specimen, you can see it's got six sides, characteristic of the barrel uh, mm -hmm. family of gemstones. The red color is a stunning kind of burgundy wine color. It's beautiful yes. and it's got that nice flat top on it, also characteristic of barrel. Okay, so this is Benitoi. Mm -hmm. These little blue, like... Little teeth, little like, canines. Oh, okay, yeah. Then we've got Neptunite, these little black, like, shards almost yeah. coming out. And then we have Naturalite on this white snow-looking thing. This is pretty much often how uh, Bonita White's found mm -hmm. with uh, the Neptunite and the Naturalite kind yeah. of sticking up. Bonita White is named after San Benito County, which mm -hmm. is its single source yeah. location yeah. in California. It's the state gemstone of California. And it has been found in other places, but again, the only viable source of it is yeah. San Benito, California. Like Red Barrel, Bonita White usually occurs in very small yeah. uh, carat weights. Relatively recent discovery in terms of gemstones. Mm -hmm. It sure. was discovered in 1907, from 1907 to 2005, and now, it's you can pay to go dig there yourself. Oh, cool! And try and find this benitoite. <sighs> Imagine finding it. Sometimes when you find them loose, they're like arrowhead shaped or like shark tooth shaped. And that's called a dipyramidal ditrigonal habit. It's very cool. It's a very unique shape for a gemstone to form. Yeah, I think it's the only gemstone that does that. So this purple stuff here is called charoite, and it's kind of a a neighbor of chrome diopside, if you will. It comes from mm -hmm. the Saka Republic in Russia, which is the only place where it is viably sourced. So what we call charoite is technically, it's more of a rock, kind of like lapis mm -hmm. lazuli. It's it's an amalgamation of different minerals, okay. and, and that's what charoite is, but it's purple instead of blue. And instead of having pyrite and things in it, it's got other minerals. It's a very nice. complex sort of rock, but it also happens to look very pretty. So the, the main ingredient in this is char white, but it's got a bunch of other rare minerals mixed in. The last stone that we have from this box and is- And then there was one. And then there was one. And it's not turquoise, it's nope. Larimar. We relate a lot of stones to the color of the ocean, mm -hmm. but I think Larimar is probably one of the ones that is truly most ocean-like. Only found in the Dominican Republic, the Southwest part of the Dominican Republic specifically. It's not just the whole Dominican Republic. The guy who named it, he named it after his daughter, Larissa, and the Spanish word for sea, which is mar. This is even more recent. How recent? Like the 70s, the 1970s. And what Larimar is, is a blue-green variety of pectolite. It gets its blue color from copper substituting in for calcium. Not surprisingly, is a very popular stone in uh, the Dominican Republic, kind of the national gym of the Dominican Republic. It's so popular. It's kind of a patriotic thing to wear it there. I think this is really cool. In the Dominican Republic, they established a national Larimar Day. It is time to take a closer look, I think. Okay. So what's your pick from today? I want to pick this, but mm -hmm. it's, it's rare and it's stunning, but it's not as pretty as the Tanzanite. Okay. I have to choose the Tanzanite. That's... Okay. It's, it might be my favorite gemstone. This big of a piece, it's wild. You only find it in one place, as with all of these, mm -hmm. but you can only get it like a couple of months. So let's take a closer look. So we are at the part of the video where it's time to give something really cool away. Check it out. So this is a pyrotized 
gastropod. At the end of the day, it is a fossil, which I think is just cool in its own right. So most of the time when a fossil occurs, it's organic material, the body of the creature is replaced slowly over time by some mineral. But every now and then, you get a different mineral slip in there during the fossilization process. What we have here is a fossil of a little sea critter made of pyrite. To enter for a chance to win this cool little guy, so send us an email with your name and address to info at gemstones.com and put fossil in the subject line. We'll be taking submissions until April 18th, 2024, and then we'll be choosing a winner at random. All the nitty gritty rules and conditions can be found at jtv.com slash giveaway rules. Now we do love our international viewers. However, this is unfortunately open to US residents only. If you want even more chances to win specimens, JTV is giving them away on their broadcast. So check the description for more information on that. Well, Sarah, thank you for joining me for this episode. I hope you guys learned something about single source gems. And don't forget, a lot of the stuff on the table is for sale. Not this guy, he's going away for free, but uh, make sure you check the links in the description to check those stuff out. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos.